Oh man, it's good to see you. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the last day of February. It is the 28th. It's Wednesday, which means tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, me and my co-host Taylor. We're there for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, taking requests from you, the investors. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share a stock with us. I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you two opinions, whatever that's worth to you. Now, to be completely fair, if you drop your ticker in after 4 o'clock when the show starts, chances are I'll never get to it. Because I put up a placeholder for this video around noon, maybe even earlier, and you can drop your ticker in the comment box then, and I do go by first come, first served. Well, by 4 o'clock, I normally have all the tickers that we can look at, so I do apologize for that. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, every Thursday. So what I like to do on this show is just to share my own personal due diligence on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks. These are stocks under 5 bucks on every market. The OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. Penny stocks are everywhere. And I am particularly looking for those that have potential to make us money. Now you can find potential in a lot of different ways. Most like to go through the news and the filings. That's fine. It takes a lot of time and you've got to have good judgment, honestly. Me, I like to go to the charts. First off, I can look at a lot of charts in a little amount of time. Second of all, at a glance, I can tell if a chart has heat. You can see if volume's coming in or if there's a breakout setup or if she's going to the moon. When you find a chart that has heat, then invest the time in their filings and press releases looking for a catalyst. Now, you don't have to just stick with fresh news. Even a stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving. So when you find a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I got one for you. This is Polestar Automotive, ticker PSNY. Now, it was her chart that lured me in. It's an atypical breakout chart, which is the one I am constantly looking for. That's when you got that 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious and starting to level out. Underneath it is the price. Well, as the 200 is getting closer to the price, the price is getting closer to the 200 until they cross. And that's when you have a breakout and a run. And that's exactly what we got right now. Not to mention, we have got a hot, big piece of news that just came out talking about a billion dollars. A billion dollars. Have I got your attention? Good. Polestar finished the day at $1.83, and we're just under 23% gains right now. I bet it moves before we leave. I'm seeing a lot of aftermarket activity. This is a penny stock on the major exchange, so you can trade it pre-market, aftermarket. You don't have to pay for any of your transactions. A lot more volume, a lot more money up on the major exchanges, and there's a lot more oversight, which means there's a lot less BS than there is on the OTC. So what is Polestar Automotive all about? They are a Swiss EV company that's in business. They're just not getting ready to start selling their cars. They've been selling their cars for a while and they're making good money doing it. Polestar is the Swedish electric performance car brand. Their cars are available online in 27 markets globally across North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Polestar plans to have a lineup of five performance EVs by 2026. Polestar 2, the electric performance fastback, which was launched in 2019. Polestar 3, the SUV for the electric age, launched in late 2022. Polestar 4, the SUV Coupe Transformed, is launching in phases through 2023 and 2024. Polestar 5, an electric four-door GT. And then their dream car, their Polestar 6, an electric roadster which Tesla is working real hard to get out right now as well. So they've got lots of different cars that they are selling in lots of different places around the world, and they're making lots of money. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's not bad. We're just under five times her normal volume, a good 400% increase going from 3.4 million up to over 15.5 million. 
Lots of extra attention being paid to this company, and I'm sure it has to do with the news. Share structure for the company. Ouch. Got a lot of shares. Just under a half a billion. 467 million. Now, I don't know what the float is. It could be anywhere up to 467 million, though it could be considerably less. You could do some homework, dig around, see if you can find it, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's not always easy to find the float on a major exchange stock. Market cap for the company, we are just under 700 million. Financials for Polestar. Well, as you can see, they don't give us anything for the annuals or the quarterlies. They don't even give us a balance sheet. Aye, aye, aye. So I jumped into the most recent financial, and would you believe the most recent one is June of last year. We have another one coming out here, but that's as close as I could get. So we're looking at the last three months and the last six months, or the first half of 2023. So the last quarter that they've reported for at the end of June for 2023, they did $685 million worth of business. We've got to add three zeros over here as well. The first half of the year, they did $1.2 billion. So you can see they're making good revenues and they are making good profits. Well, usually that last quarter they reported on, they started losing money. And I'm not real sure why, but I do know they have some financial pressures right now. I was trying to get to the bottom of their stockholder equity. Well, this company has subsidiaries that work in different countries and the numbers are broke down in different ways, their liabilities, their assets. So I couldn't get to the bottom line, but the way it looks to me, we have at least, and I could be wrong here, but we have at least 500 million in stockholder deficit, not equity. She's having some financial problems right now, which is why the news that came out today is a big deal. Taking a look at the disclosures. We do have a couple of disclosures over here that are recent. We've got an SC13D. These are always good news. These are new investors, new owners. 13D is a silent investor, somebody that's putting their money into the business and just going to let it grow. A 13G is an active investor. That's a new owner that wants to be a part of the game. So we've got a new investor that came in here and we have a big piece of news. And both of these are wrapped up in the news that came out today. Big hot news. Polestar secures $1 billion in external funding. Actually, it's not $1 billion. It's closer to $950 million of funding that they secured. And they got this from Geely Sweden Holdings, who intends to participate in the future financing activities when required. Geely Sweden is the number one stockholder for Volvo. He is also the number one stockholder in this company now. Volvo used to be the number one stockholder in this company, and at this very moment, they may still be. They were holding 48% of the company, but they're going to sell off 30% of their shares and retain 18%. Meanwhile, Geely Sweden Holdings is bringing in all of this money into this company right now. So they tell us here that Polestar Automotive PLC has secured $950 million in external funding. The financing is being provided by 12 leading international banks. It provides Polestar with the funds it requires to finance the next stage of its development and covers a large majority of its estimated financing needs. I would hope so, $950 million. Cash on the balance sheets for the company at the end of December 2023 was $770 million. So the company themselves had 770 million at the end of December, and now they're getting 950 million on top of that. You're looking at over $1.5 billion that they're gonna to use to help grow the company. Daniel Lee, Geely Holdings Group CEO and Polestar board member states, as a strategic partner and direct shareholder in Polestar, Geely Holdings will continue to provide full operational and financial support to the iconic performance car brand going forward. Folks, that's a punch ticket right there. They are guaranteeing to back this company up with whatever they need. We will retain our shares in Polestar and intend to participate in future financing activities when required. Now, these are some of the things they're doing to make the company stronger. 
they are going to be eliminating 10% of the jobs. Uh, well, they already did that mid-2023 with a further 15% to follow in 2024. Polestar was able to expand its model range with two high-margin SUVs. The Polestar 4 sales are accelerating around the world. Polestar 3 has now started production in China and has also successfully completed test production runs in South Carolina. Prototype production of Polestar 5, a progressive performance GT, will also accelerate in 2024. Now, I'm excited about that Polestar 3 in China. Folks, China has a all EV rule for 2025. They are the first country, the biggest country in the world. They are going to be all EV by 2025. That doesn't mean everybody's going to own an EV. It means nobody's going to be able to use their combustible engines anymore. They're not going to be able to use their cars, so they're going to need cars. And this company's going to be right there selling their Polestar 3. So that sounds great to me. They got money of their own. They got money coming in. Yes, Volvo is stepping back, but the main stockholder for Volvo has moved over to here. I think that's a good thing, don't you? Volvo is taking a back seat to Polestar. I don't see anything wrong with Volvo, but Polestar is on the ball. They're all EV already. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. I'm also liking that chart. Let me show you what I found there. Well, step right on up and take a seat because we're about ready to chart PSNY on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at a one-day, one-year chart for Polestar Automotive. We've got a high back a year ago, deep under the 200, at about $5.62. Off of that high bubble, she dropped fast and hard, down to $3.20. Went sideways for a few months, and then had a breakout attempt here. Now, it makes complete sense. Our 200-day SMA was falling fast, and it started to level out here, so you would expect an attempt. Well, she gave it an attempt, and she failed miserably. Went into a deep dive, falling now down to $2.20. She went sideways for a while, making headway, actually, getting through all of these SMAs, and then fell again. Here at the end of February, she hit $1.30. Let's come on down to our six-month, four-hour view. So now we've got a high of $4.96 back in July. She has been falling all of this time, making attempts to break out any time the 200-day SMA got flat, but she isn't getting anywhere. Now she's hit this low of $1.30, and this is not only a 52-week low, it's an all-time low. It could be a flashing for sale sign, especially with the news that came out today. When you see a 52-week low or an all-time low, People are hunting these bubbles, and as soon as they see it, the first thing they do is check out the fundamentals, see if there's any value in the company. Is this a deal? And if it is, you'll see a bounce back, and it'll start to grow fast. Well, with the news that came out today, I can see this thing growing fast. So she's bounced off of that low bubble of $1.30. She has gotten through all of her SMAs. Once she hit this 20, folks, look at all the excitement. She bursted off the 20 through the 200 haul, through the 50 day, through the 200 day SMA, and even higher. That is a lot of excitement showing us what she wants to do. She has fallen back to the nine day SMA, which has also crossed all of the SMAs, and she is still pushing up, banging her head up against that 200. It is looking strong to me. Look at our volume. It has been increasing over the last five days, getting stronger and stronger. Our oscillators are on fire. This is a volcano down here. Everything is pushing up super hard. It is erupting right now, folks. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Serious downtrend, no doubt about that. We were at $2.33 here 20 days ago. Fell down to almost half of that to a buck thirty. She is bouncing off of that. She's gotten over 200, and it looks good, folks. She took a strong rip. She came down, went sideways until she found her nine-day SMA. That became her support, and now she's climbing again. She wasn't looking for any help from any of these other SMAs, which all happened to be combed right and going the right direction. This looks really good, folks. Osculators, 
PPO, percentage price oscillator, very hot and strong. MACD is strong with just a wee bit of cooling off, but nothing to worry about. And our RSI has just stepped out of the overbought for a second. Personally, I like it when it's in the overbought. It can be up there for a long time. Look, this was up there darn near all day. So don't let anybody tell you, oh, it's going to come down. It's in the RSI. It's overbought. No, it could be there all day, all day tomorrow too. Taking a look at our five-day, five-minute chart, we got to change the trend. There's our 200 falling, passing our low bubble. We got a peak up over on top of the 200. She got flat, and now she's climbing. Off of the low bubble, she jumped up onto that 200, danced on it, <laughs> and then jumped onto her 50 and started climbing. Gave one last tag onto the 200 and shot away. That was her diving board right there. She sprung up from about a buck 45 up to almost two bucks. That is about, uh, what are you looking at there? 25% gains, roughly. I think that's right. 50, or no, that's 30. 30% 30 gains. That's right. Came down. She did fall underneath the 50, but that is what she's respecting, folks, the 50. She came underneath it, came back up on top. There's her, her salute, right? She came down and tagged it, giving respect, and now she's jumped back up on the 9, and she is climbing. Our 200 is looking sweet. Our oscillators, they're a little cooler now than they have been, but they're all still climbing just very slowly right now. I like PSNY. They've got multiple vehicles already on the market being sold in multiple places around the world. They're making good revenues, and now they've got solid backing. Virtually a billion dollars being brought into the company and a promise to continue supporting them through the future. It doesn't get any better than that, folks. Put PSNY on your watch list. Matter of fact, do some more due diligence. I think this is a stock you may want to invest in or at least play because she is set up for a breakout right now. Remember, folks, I only share some information with you. I want to get you excited. I want to get you curious. Hopefully, I've done that. And if I have, you'll do your due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.